Sometimes, if you're still enough, they say you can see the sky dancing. The white blood cells deep within our eyes, visible against great expanses of nothing. Lying too sick to stand, I imagine joining in its revelry, to laugh above the peaks, weightless, electric. So many good things in life, it began with a seed. A story sown by a teacher of mine who ventured deep in the heart of the Himalayas. Trails sparse and uncertain, he told of how he was lost amidst icy peaks as night fast approached. And as he'd contemplated an unplanned overnight camp, a lone monk had approached and beckoned for my teacher to follow. Invited inside a tent some distance down the valley, the gift of tea was offered. Without a shared language, communicating only with eye contact and smiles, the monk had gifted far more than tea. He provided reassurance and peace to my teacher's weary soul. That tea was yak butter tea, and upon hearing this story, I vowed to experience it myself. The plan was to ride my bicycle into the Himalayas, through small towns and villages in search of herds of yaks. A trekking route called the Annapurna Circuit promised to make logistics quite easy. Shortly before departure, however, the Nepali government issued a ban on solo treks beginning April 1st, just two days after I would arrive. With a guide antithetical to my plans of getting lost in the mountains and many other regions with bans on cycling, my stomach was not of uncertainties as my bicycle and I flew into Kathmandu. After landing and finding a place for the night, I did the only thing I could and rode my way swiftly to the tourism board in hopes of getting a permit or at least a definitive answer. incredible stroke of luck, with 15 minutes left to spare before the permit office closed, I had a stamp in hand and was told it would be valid as long as I entered the conservation area the next day. Waking at 5 to catch the earliest bus to Besa Sahar, I pedaled into the Annapurna conservation area on March 31st, just before sunset. I made it. From Besa Sahar, the way forward was simple. Just follow the valley upwards. Namaste. 
Progress was swift, though an unusually dry winter had been followed by a wet spring which we are now experiencing as evening storms. Despite coming across many yak herds, their milk was in short supply as the grasses which typically offered sustenance in the spring were under snow, and baby yaks needed all the milk they could get. Near the town of Paisong, after asking around about yak butter, I was invited inside a smoky hut with the family as snow fell heavily outside. Sitting cross-legged around a fire over which Roxy was distilling, I learned that my best chance of finding yak milk was probably on the other side of the pass. That night, drunk on Roxy and laughter that overcame us at my attempts at Nepali, we shared stories in Tukpa, and I fell a little bit in love with a girl named Minku, who had left university in Kathmandu in order to take care of her alma back in Paisong. My brakes were fading substantially as I climbed, and by the time I was in Manong, my rear brake was gone. Going uphill, this wasn't a huge problem yet. Taking a day off to fix it though, with cooking oil and a syringe from the pharmacy, I managed to completely strip the screw meant to seal the system. Frustrated, I resigned to continue onwards and just call it a problem for future me. That's when I met Cigar. Originally from Delhi, he'd been riding a half day behind. We agreed to team up for the push over the pass, and I convinced him to come along with me on a detour towards Tilicho Lake in search of yaks. Then we met Julian, a seasonal French chef with a strong case of ennui. Julian agreed to come along to Tilicho if we could find a bike. And so, with Cigar's help, we tracked down a local bicycle, and, in crazy coincidence, an ancient spare brake from a broken and gutted bicycle in a shed, which, upon being mounted upside down and to the wrong part of my handlebars with a plethora of zip ties and quite unconventional cable routing, allowed me to actually stop my bike while going downhill. We were off on an adventure. Cigar was a smart one as we hit the rock slide zones. Julian and I chose to ride through, but not long after I heard a yell from behind. Looking back, Julian had fallen a good 10-15 meters down slope. It was too steep and loose for me to climb down to assist, but as Julian struggled back up, a man on horseback happened to ride by and came to the rescue. I held the horse's reins in Sadeep's hand as he leaned far over the edge of the trail, dangling the jacket for Julian to grab onto. Needless to say, we were more careful after that. Saying goodbye to Julian after the lake was tough as Cigar and I rode onwards to the pass. The evening after we reached high camp, I was overcome by altitude. I turned to Cigar and asked him to keep an eye on me in case anything got worse. I watched the sky and the mountains as I sipped as much tea as I could stomach. I foolishly decided that the quickest way down was up and over the pass. And so, after waking up at 3am in order to make it over before the afternoon storms came, I made the stupidest decision of my life and pushed onwards. Unable to keep food or liquids down, feet slipping on unseasonable ice and snow as I carried my bicycle and gear over the 17,700 foot pass, I felt a countdown in my head. At the top, feeling anything but the triumph I tried to portray, it was all I could do to lift my bike momentarily for a picture.
going downhill. It was too steep and icy to ride. And after the scariest wrong turn of my life, I climbed back to the trail which left me utterly spent and exhausted. The sun was well below the mountains by the time I made it down to the nearest town for the pharmacy. When I finally found yak butter tea at a guest house in Cogbenny, it was about as far from my teacher's experience as possible. There were no monks, I wasn't lost, and I didn't feel any particular sense of reassurance wash over me. In fact, the tea I realized was the same as the Tibetan tea I'd been drinking over the course of the trip, though maybe a little bit more funky. tea had come in the form of Roxy on a snowy night, laughing around a fire with a family who would welcome me wholeheartedly. <laughs> 